Good day everyone, Complaining Gamer here. Welcome to Yuzu, the original Nintendo Switch emulator. I first took a look at Yuzu back in January and here we are six months later. Let's see what's new. When Yuzu first emerged, similar to any emulator, the focus was on bare bones basics. In January, we were marvelling at a homebrew space game running at 1 FPS. Thankfully today, it has progressed and made strides towards becoming a fully fledged Switch emulator capable of booting your personal backups of commercial titles. Jumping right into the things that I like. Firstly, Yuzu has an easy to use graphical user interface with optimal settings pre-configured which you don't need to touch. It's ready to go as best it currently can out of the box. As a pleasant aesthetic touch, you can enable a dark theme if it's your thing. Also, recently played titles are kept in memory for quick and convenient access and can be linked to a game list directory. Yuzu has Switch docked mode already integrated which means that you can play any working title in full screen by pressing F11 or upscaled to a higher resolution of up to 4 times native that of the Switch's 720p. The default controls are for keyboard but if you prefer gamepad you can easily map the buttons in the configuration menu. When downloading Yuzu you'll notice that it has nightly and canary builds. Nightly is reviewed and tested whereas Canary has certain features yet to be reviewed. Additionally, it is clear that the team are devoted to supporting multiple platforms including Linux, Mac and Windows. Yuzu doesn't require any special game format and will load files as expected based on the current Switch emulator standard, both in folder and file types. Naturally, it is capable of running .nro and .nso for those of you who like to test homebrew applications. Moving on to performance, Switch emulation across the board is still very much in its infancy, highly experimental, full of bugs, unoptimized and very much a work in progress. This means that expectations need to be measured and reasonable, paired with patience. So for those of you jumping to sell your Switch, don't. Progression and improvement is a daily pursuit, but emulation development can be a long and gruelling task. Let's go over some of the titles which boot and see how they behave. For now, I'm not looking to compare emulators as it's too early to do so fairly. On titles which boot, something which impressed me was the speed of loading. Take for example Puyo Puyo Tetris, a near instant load, something which I didn't expect. You'll notice that the opening splash screen runs at 60 FPS followed by 15 FPS in the main menu. Puyo Puyo gameplay sits right around 5 FPS. Visuals are presented perfectly and the game is beautifully sharp. Audio is yet to be implemented into Yuzu so we don't have sound but it is on the very near horizon. You can learn more about the development in their blog post which provides some very interesting insights. In terms of system utilization statistics, GPU is hardly touched at 10%, with CPU between 30 to 40%. Currently, Yuzu is quite RAM hungry, eating up approximately 5 active gigabytes, with more committed system RAM taking us close to 9 gigabytes. You should expect this number to decrease in the future with further Yuzu optimizations. Puyo Puyo is obviously running a little slow, however, take note that it does not crash and rounds can be completed, you just need monk-like patience. Keep in mind that these statistics will change depending on game and are reflective of the hardware in my personal system which you'll find listed in the description. For clarity I should add that not all working titles instantly provide visuals. Puyo Puyo is a best case scenario for now and that's a crucial point. Update coverage is a mark in development history and only temporarily relevant as the bar is constantly moving which then requires further update coverage. The next title I want to highlight is One Piece Unlimited World Red which similar to Puyo Puyo Tetris loads with impressive speed. Throughout splash screens to main menu, 60fps is maintained with visuals cleanly and accurately presented. When opening the story menu, fps drops to between 10 and 20. Unfortunately, loading into the story provides an infinite loop so gameplay is not possible. With each new title, remember to take note of my system statistics and how they differ from each game shown in the top left corner of the screen.
Moving a bit quicker now, we can fly through some other titles. Minecraft Story Mode gives us a taste of 3D rendering in the menu. Super Mario Odyssey will take you to the game start menu. Sonic Mania goes in-game and plays at half speed at 30 FPS. Tiny Barbarian goes in-game and is playable at 4 FPS. Binding of Isaac sees gameplay at around 14 FPS. Stardew Valley, with the help of a save file, will get into gameplay and perform at 5 FPS. Cave Story goes in game and runs at 1 FPS. And finally, Disgaea 5 loads quickly but ultimately goes nowhere. Make sure to request a game and I'll take a look for you. To the people out there who are emulation enthusiasts, I recommend using the Canary builds as they rarely crash. Feel free to go back and check out my original January coverage to see the beginnings of Yuzu. To finish, I'd like to say that I highlighted a performance bug to the Yuzu team and they quickly eliminated it, something which I commend. So there you have it everyone, a Yuzu Switch emulator update. Leave your ideas, thoughts and comments down below. If you want to keep up to date with all things Complaining Gamer, come follow me on Twitter or join the community Discord. All links are provided. If you enjoyed the content, leave a like. If you didn't, dislike and comment. And to know the latest user info, subscribe and hit that bell icon. I'll catch you in the next one.